forsaken Take me, Jesus, take me So, I would think you would understand the musical term. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm, I'm never, oh, okay, I got you. I didn't know we were going, that was a musical term, but I learned something today. Hey, y'all give Dad and Joni another round of applause. Man, I hope I don't have to take notes. I lost my pen. Oh, sorry, I got sidetracked there for a minute. Hey, y'all, welcome to Williamson County Cowboy Church. How are y'all this morning? Y'all make some noise. You know, as Joni said, it was just the three of us this morning. And it reminded me of something that I saw. And I want y'all to love me. I, I saw this this week. And so I want you to love what I'm fixing to say, and I'll explain it. But I saw this. It was fairly young pastor of a church. And he said, after church, he had this older lady came up and she goes, well, I don't like that worship music that y'all just played. And his response was, he said, well, good, it wasn't for you. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Now, see, because that was my first response. I was, yeah, yeah, but. He went on to explain, and it's what we know we don't think about because we always put us in the picture. It's not about us. That worship was not for me. It was the worship's for who? God. Man, that's who our praise and our worship is for. We get to be a part of it. Amen? So how do you choose to be a part of that praise and worship is God probably doesn't really care if you like the... I mean, I don't mean it wrong. You know, I like some of the old hymns and some of the old hymns I don't like. I like some of the newer stuff and some of the stuff my wife listens to I don't really understand. You know, the words are probably real good, but I can't get past this. That's all I can hear in my head is the bass. You know, because I hear those things first. So somebody say hallelujah this morning that that worship is for you, Lord. Amen? Yeah. I, I didn't mean anything by that, so please don't take it that way. But I thought, man, that is so true because we get so self-centered about our lives. And true, it's our lives, but it's for God. And so we got to understand who we're serving, and we're not serving ourselves. Amen? So, again, welcome to Cowboy Church. If this is the first time you're visiting, we are so glad that you are here. 
And we know that there are bunches and there's more churches pop of course there's more going out and there's more coming in so you have a lot of choice to get here but we know you had to drive away so if you're visiting for the first time we don't make you do anything silly or anything like that but we do want to recognize you and we want to welcome you as a church so if you're visiting for the first time hold your hand up please we want to give you a welcome any visitors back over here back over here yeah Hopefully they gave you a pack, a packet when you came in. There's a card in there to fill out. We'll call you one time just to check on you, make sure you're doing okay. If you didn't get a packet, hold your hand up and we'll get you one. So we just want to make sure that, because if you need prayer, when, when we call you that first time, we'll pray for you. We'll pray with you. Amen. But again, welcome to Williamson County Cowboy Church and the people online. Man, we're so glad to have you this morning. I, for those of you visiting, I am not the pastor. Uh, he is on the road. And uh, he was in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Y'all, our pastor got fourth in the first round of Cheyenne. And as they call Cheyenne, that's the daddy of them all. So he, he did good yesterday. And so, you know, he was praying about that. He was speaking that. And see, that's what happens when we speak over our lives. Are you speaking negative or positive? I may start preaching. I hadn't even got wound up yet. But... He practices what he teaches us. He practices what, as they say, he preaches. You see, he was speaking last week over, man, I need to do good. I'm going to do good. I'm going to do good. Yesterday, he placed fourth. Man, that's awesome because your words will make you or they will not make you. Amen? Guys, you can go ahead and start passing out those tithes offerings, uh, envelopes. But if you're visiting here for the first time, one thing that we do here at Cowboy Church is our pastor Corey and his wife Jamie, they do not take a salary at this church. When they started the church 18 years ago, God put it on his heart not to take a salary because that way he can teach about tithes and offerings and about operating in God's economy. And so if y'all haven't noticed, it's kind of there lately. The economy is, is nuts. But when you choose to walk this way and you walk in God's economy, then you don't worry about, well, did the gold market go down or up or did the stock market go down or up or did oil and gas go down or up? Or if you're tithing and you're giving your offerings and your first fruits and your alms, then God's word says that he will give back to you pressed down shaken together running over that no man's bosom can hold it all y'all in malachi he says he's going to open the windows of heaven if you'll bring the tithe your tithe if you'll bring your tithe in to his storehouse he said it says he to prove him that means to test him god doesn't tell us that but once or twice in the bible to test him that's one of the places he said, you bring your tithe into the storehouse and I'll open the windows of heaven and dump out a blessing on you that you can't contain. Man, that's good stuff right there. So I want y'all to turn to um, this really neat scripture this morning. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Chapter 29. Everybody say amen when you get there. Oh my, if you're still getting there. That's all right, go ahead. It's toward the front. It's 570, page 575 in mine, so. All right, I'm going to start. Verse 1. Y'all listen to this. Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon my son, whom alone God hath chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great, for the palace is not for man, but for God. I'm going to jump over to the Amplified because I like the way the Amplified says it better. Verse 2, So I have provided with all my might for the house of my God the gold for things to be of gold, silver for the things of silver, bronze for the things of bronze, iron for things of iron, and wood for things of wood, as well as onyx or barrel stones, stones to be set, stones of antonomy, atomony, Stones of various colors and all sorts of precious stones and marble stones in abundance. Verse 3. Moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, in addition to all I have prepared for the holy house, 
I have a private treasure of gold and silver, which I give for the house of my God. This is David talking. And Dave, this is David's private money that he, in gold and silver that he's given right here. Verse 4, it is 3,000 talents of gold, gold of Ophir, 7,000 talents of refined silver for overlaying in the walls of the house. And he's built, this is God's house that he's given to. Gold for the uses of gold, silver for the uses of silver, and for every work to be done by craftsmen. Now who will offer willingly to fill his hand and consecrate it today to the Lord like one consecrating himself to the priesthood? Verse 6, I'm getting there. Then the chiefs of the fathers and princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and of hundreds with the rulers of the king's work offered willingly. Everybody say willingly. willingly. Verse 7, And God for their service of the house of God and of gold 5,000 talents and 10,000 derricks of silver, 10,000 talents of bronze, 18,000 talents and 100,000 talents of iron. My goodness. And whoever had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord in the care of Jehiel the Gershonite. Listen to this, verse 9. Then the people rejoiced because these had given willingly. Everybody say willingly. For with a whole and blameless heart they offered freely to the Lord. King David also rejoiced greatly. Y'all, my point is this morning, they gave willingly they gave with the right heart i have learned over the years that i've been operating this way that i am blessed every time i get to give and if you noticed i said get to give i don't have to give okay but if you want to operate in god's economy and you want to activate those economical blessings how you like economical blessings if you want to activate those economical blessings of god then you have to start sowing. You need to start sowing. Because guess what? As you sow, just as I said, he's going to send it back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That's with your tithe. And then with your offering, when you give an offering, he'll bless it back to you 30, 60, and even 100 fold. And it works, y'all. I have reaped that before. I reap it every day when somebody just blesses me. Amen? Amen. Don't you want that? Aren't you tired? Because I know that some of you still struggle with finances. The way I know is the Holy Spirit just told me. So you need to get a hold of this. I was there. I've been there when I didn't have any money. I've been there when, you, when I could, man, I could juggle the books with the best of them. <laughs> I could move this over here to pay this bill one time and this over here. and Man, it was like, juggling cats man but you know what after a while that gets old and after a while I start feeling like oh my lord you know and when your wife had been paying bills and it was eating her up and you say no no let me do it and I started doing it it's eating me up but I'd rather it eat me up than her right because I take care of her but then when we got into the knowing of operating in God's economy man now it's like, whoo, I get to pay this. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. I get to pay this, and I get to do this, and I get to bless this person over here, and if I see somebody that needs something, I get to pull over and I get to bless them. Amen, because God gives it back to us. His word says that he supplies our seed that we can sow. You don't even have to get it. He gets it to you if you operate in his economy. Amen? Man, y'all come give this morning with a round of shout and praise this morning. Woo, Lord, have mercy. We got a special this morning. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the rain this you got planned for us. We know you got it on your schedule because it's your time, not ours. So y'all give a big round of applause for the rain. Woo! Thank you, Lord. You know, one thing that I know is that people go, oh, it's not going to rain. It's not going to rain on their place. 
because they just said it wasn't. It's raining on my place. I promise you. God's got it scheduled, and he's going to send it in. And it may be 102 outside, but God's going to change the temperature. But are y'all speaking to it? Because we, we know that the word works. So why don't we just keep speaking to it? We've got to believe in this, y'all. Come on. And y'all make our... Give me your name. I, haven't ha I can't remember your name if I've met you. NEFS. And this is Nash, y'all. He's going to be doing a special for us this morning. Well, hello, my name is Ness, N-E-S-S, -E -S -S, not M-E-S-S. -S. Anyway, I hope you all are blessed, and I thank God for this privilege and opportunity to bless you as God has blessed me. I hope you all enjoy this song. If you haven't told Jesus you love him, tell him while I'm singing this song that you love him. When the burdens of this life get too heavy And it seemed that my soul was in despair Precious Jesus, you came to my rescue And you whispered that someone still cares Oh, dear Jesus, I love you. I can't live without you. All my sorrow and heartache you've known. I will never forget life you. So I'll share it wherever I go. I've tried you many times You've never failed me Though unworthy And so weak I have been And by the power And the grace That you grant me Lord I mean to Be true Till the end Though my friends in this world, they may forsake me. I have a friend who will always be true. You have said, Lord, you never would leave me. So dear Jesus, I'm depending on you. Oh, dear Jesus, I love you. I can't live without you. All my sorrow and heartache you've known. And I will never forget this life you gave me. So I'll share it wherever I go. And I will never forget this life you gave me. So I'll share it wherever I go. Amen. Amen. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Man. Woo, thank you, Lord. I, I forgot to do announcements. There's, I, we really don't have that many other than about the arena where we're still, um, we have a lot started already. They've been moving dirt. Uh, Pastor Corey talked about it last week. If you still want to give, if God puts it on your heart, put the arena fund on your check when you give it. 
and uh, there's still things that are going to have to be purchased once we get it covered and the the shoots and all that stuff so if be praying about it if god puts it on your heart then just put arena fund on the line on your check also bible study tuesday night fellowship is at 6 30 bible study starts at seven it usually over with by eight o'clock so y'all check that out and on sunday morning they have bible study at nine o'clock uh, in the back so if you can't make it on Tuesdays or even if you come on Tuesdays and you want to come on Sundays and get a double dose well come on because it is good stuff I hear good things out of Sunday morning so and Alan thank you for filling in for my wife this morning it's not just because my wife teaches it but there's other great teachers on Tuesday and Sunday so y'all give those teachers a round of applause they need it yeah amen is all everybody going out this morning littles and big all right, well, on the count of three, we're going to dismiss both big ones and little ones. One, two, three, give them a big round of applause. <clears throat> hey, John, would you get me a bottle of water, please? Thank you. I uh, got started this morning, and I had a little sinus, and I took a sinus pill, and now I could spit cotton balls across this place. Kind of reminds me of the first time I preached about seven years ago when Corey told me the night before I was preaching the next morning on the road. Ricky could spit cotton balls in the Coliseum of San Angelo, I guarantee you. We had not even moved here yet. and so. But that sinus pill's working. Everything's drying up. Even the anointed spit is drying up. So, Man, are y'all ready to receive this morning? Yeah. Well, get your Bibles out. And uh, let me get find where we're starting at this morning. Y'all turn to... Second Timothy. Last week, Corey talked about, and he's been talking about, the supernatural. And what does that look like? What is the supernatural? And that, that he talked about, it's like raising people from the dead, healing, miraculous things. And we can see that, but he also threw in something last week that was quite interesting. In order for us to start, start operating in that supernatural, we need to work on our love walk right and some of you are going okay he stepped on toes last week and now you're stepping on toes again thank you John y'all just excuse me just a minute oh that's good but what I want to bring up is that he's talking about love and I want y'all to hear this because I, I read this this week and it was so cool if I can find it I didn't have it ready. I apologize. I should have. Okay, here we go. This is Dr. Billy Brim. And it fit with so much for what Corey said last week. It says, you have to do what it takes to get the power. Speaking of the power of God, as born-again, Spirit-filled believers, the power of God is in us by way of the Holy Spirit. We must do what it takes to get that power operating through us. Love is the insulation that the power flows through. Read that line again. Love is the insulation that the power flows through. Without love, the insulation, God can't release His power through us. Isn't that good? Man, I saw that and I thought, that, that rings so true with what Corey's talking about on our love walk. Because how can we expect to have that power, that supernatural power, if we're mad at somebody? It's like it cancels it out. Or if you're still holding on to for unforgiveness for somebody that did you wrong 30 years ago, it's kind of hard to walk that love walk, right? Or all of a sudden you're walking this love walk and you're, you're starting to feel that power and then the devil's over here reminding you of what that person did to you that they borrowed $100 from you 10 years ago and they never paid you back and you're going, well, that person. Guess what? You just killed the power. Amen? So we have to learn how to walk in love in order to have that supernatural power. Amen? Now that has nothing to do with my sermon today. But somebody needed to hear that because the Holy Spirit told me to share it this morning. So that's what I'm doing. 
See, we have to understand that that kind of power, there's, there's a different power, and we're going to talk about the different power today, okay? But that supernatural power comes from if you're walking that love walk, okay? And then you can start easing into that supernatural walk with both feet all at one time. You notice I said easing? There's nothing easing about it. Once you start walking in love, once you quit holding grudges, once you say, you know what, I forgive you. I don't have to have you over for chicken on Sunday, but I forgive you. Move on. It's the most freeing, most delivering thing that you will ever do in your lifetime. Well, maybe not ever. Okay, that might be stretching it. Some of you are going, well, that didn't work. What I'm telling y'all is, when you learn how to forgive somebody that's done you wrong, no matter whether you do it to their face or not, you will have this weight lifted off of you. And there's somebody in here that this is for. Because like I said, this had nothing to do with my sermon. But you've got to let go of the unforgiveness. Okay? You're just hurting yourself. How in these last days can we walk in the supernatural power if we're still ticked off at somebody? You know? Man, when you... Golly. Y'all know me. I cry sometimes, so it, just get over it. Just get over it. Because uh, the Holy Spirit just told me something, and I'm like, oh, my Lord, that's so good. The more, the more that you love people, the more that you could get into unforgiveness. Because the more that you love on people, there are going to be people that will try to take advantage of that. And guess what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You keep moving. You keep moving forward. Man, that is so good. The more that you try to love on somebody. You know, it's like people in the store, when you try to be nice, that's loving on them. When you say, God bless you, and they look at you, you're going to go, hush. Just walk by you. That's a moment that I have a choice. I can get mad at them. Or I can go, thank you, Lord, for letting me plant that seed. Woo! My Lord. When we learn to start looking at stuff that way, y'all, when we learn to start going, man, thank you for that opportunity, Lord. Thank you for opening that door for me. Thank you for letting me bless somebody. Thank you for letting me say, I love you. And say, tell a stranger that on the street. And they'll go, oh, Jesus. I know because I do it. I will meet somebody for the first time and I've practiced and I've practiced and it's got in my heart. And when I tell you I love you, I mean it. I may not love what you do or like what you do or what they do, but I love them. And you know what? After a while, you will get somebody going, I love you too. I don't know them. But you know what? Every time we open that door of saying I love you to somebody, the agape kind of love that people don't necessarily get all the time, there's a tendency for them to be ticked off. You don't know me. You don't. God knows. And if we don't start allowing to use God to use us in that way, then we will not walk in the supernatural, y'all. We will not start seeing those things in our lives. Man, I hope somebody's getting something because this was for somebody. Because I, whoo, Jesus. Man, the Holy Spirit is so good. And when we learn to listen, he, he shows us exactly what we need to see. Oh, thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Everybody find Second Timothy? I guess y'all got two sermons in one today. Today, we could title this, Be of Good Courage, or Be Like an Eagle, or just pick one. It's okay. Y'all just title this whatever you want. And you might see how it gets there at the end. I don't know. Oh, goodness. 
2 Timothy 1 7 says, For God hath not given us a spirit, the spirit, and I almost did it, the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And as I was really leaning in on what I was supposed to minister about this week, the, the Holy Spirit took me to this, and I really couldn't figure out why, but it says, How many of you have ever quoted this scripture? And because I've done it, it doesn't mean y'all have, but I, he gave me a spirit of fear, a spirit of fear. Y'all, there is not a spirit of fear, the spirit of fear. There's one spirit of fear. There's not classifications of it's either fear or it's not fear when it comes to the world. Amen. Amen? Now we have the fear of God, which is a reverent fear, which we stand in awe of our God. That's that kind of fear. But in this case, it says the spirit of fear. And here it says, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Well, we talked about the supernatural power, right? And then we just talked about love and then of sound mind, which is self-control. Now, that's an area that we're going to kind of, we're going to skirt it a little bit with the other scripture this morning. But, and we're going to talk about that, the strength of God. Now, the strength of God this morning gives us that power, but it's not the supernatural power that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about that power that you need in order to go through something that you're going through. See, that's a different power. That's a different strength. It's a different strong. So, in Colossians, you can write this down. I'll tell you the ones you need to turn to. If you want to turn to them, that's fine. Just, y'all hang on. Colossians 1.11 says, Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Now that's kind of a, a, a combination there, isn't it? I mean, he strengthens with might according to his power unto all patience and long suffering. He's going to strengthen us so that we can go through something. Amen? He's not going to necessarily change the situation you're in, but he's going to give us the strength with all of his might in us. Listen to the passion. And we pray that you would be energized with all his explosive power from the realm of his magnificent glory, filling you with great hope. Man, don't you want to be energized? Don't you know that when the devil attacks you, you have a choice. You can lay down in the floor and throw a fit like a baby. You can butt up in a little ball. I can't do this anymore. Or you can start saying, uh, God, I need you. I need you right now. And see, this is where you start learning how to get into his power of strength for this. Amen? All right, so the power is so that, as I said, we can endure patiently. Not in our time that it's going to be, oh, fine next week. Or it's going to be, oh, it's going to be fine in a month. And I'm, going to, I'm not going to call any names, but I had one of our folks that goes to church here this morning came up and told me. He's been dealing with some stuff, and him and his wife, and we've visited with him and prayed for him, and, and he came up, and he had a doctor's report this week. And he said, the doctor goes, what happened? What'd you do? Praise God. You see, it wasn't in their time. As much as we want it to be in our time, that's not how it works. Amen? Amen. It's in God's time. And so as God is preparing us, he's also going to prepare that strength, that inner strength that we need to go through what we're going through. He says he'll always give us a way out, right? He'll not tempt us any more than any other man's been tempted. And he will give us the way out if we so lean into him and allow him to give us that way. Amen? Amen. All right. So... Psalms 27, 14. You can write this down. It says, wait on the Lord. 
Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. So I, I, the Holy Spirit had me break this out a little bit. That word wait on the Lord is not what we necessarily think of wait. You know, when we, you've heard this, you've heard preachers say this before. Waiting on the Lord doesn't mean that you don't do anything. That's true. It doesn't. Right? I mean, like, God, I saw this the other day. I loved it, too. It's like, God's not going to ask you to dig a hole and him help you, and you lean on the shovel while he digs the hole. Amen. Some of y'all may say, oh, that was good. I'm like, because there's people like that. There's people that, that, okay, God, I'm waiting on you. Go ahead. No. But see, we, in, we misinterpret that word, wait. Because in the Hebrew, that word wait means a patient trust in the Lord. Oh, wait a minute. That don't sound the same now, does it? It says, wait on the Lord. But if you exchange that word wait, it says patient trust in the Lord. Patient trust in the Lord. And it goes on to say, be of good courage. Good courage means to be stout, strong, or bold. See, I never, when, when I, before I got in the ministry, I thought I knew what courage was. It was to be brave, you know. And then as I learn and I study, and I, I study these words, and thanks to my wife for pushing me to do that, because studying was not a big thing for me in school, and it's become a great thing in the Bible, though believe me but that word good courage to be stout to be strong and bold and he shall strengthen here's that word strengthen thine heart wait i say on the lord that strengthen means to make strong a stronghold a refuge See, it doesn't just mean... When, when I think of strength, and, and maybe y'all too, though, it's like I think of how can I lift, you know, 100 pounds. And I have before, and I don't like it. Get help, right? So I'm getting old enough, work smarter, not harder. Right. But see, when I think of strength, I think of how physically strong somebody is. We're not talking about that in the Bible right now. That strength is an inner strength in us. Listen to Ephesians. I skipped, but that's okay. Because I guess that's where I'm supposed to be. Ephesians 3.16 says this, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his, listen, by his spirit in the inner man. See, that's where that inner strength is, that inner man. And I wrote down here that increased spiritual strength, not a change in situation, but an internal change. See, how are we, in, how are we taking on something when we take it on? Are we fighting it with our strength or are we fighting it with our internal strength? Where his spirit dwells, he dwells. Ask for spiritual blessings, which are the best blessings. Amen? Man, it's always good to be blessed with finances and with things and, and what God wants. But when you get those spiritual blessings, see, it teaches us. That's what that Holy Spirit blesses us with knowledge. All we have to do is lean in, and he will definitely give it to you you got to ask. you got to ask. Because, but the more that you operate in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, He will continually start speaking to you more. But if you're not talking to Him, more than likely, He's not going to just be a, a chatty Cathy with you. Because you're not talking to Him. You have all day long at work, Man, you can, there's times when there's nobody around and you can pray. You can just talk. Pr talking is pray. Everybody looks at praying as getting down on your hands and knees. You can pray standing up. You can pray sitting down. You can pray laying down. You can talk to God. That's what praying is. And so many people want to get so religious about praying. Well, cool, you've heard Pastor Corey talk about that. Oh, Father in heaven, nothing how he's Baptist preachers used to do. Man, why don't you just say, God, 
The devil just attacked me. I'm struggling here. I need some help. Amen. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. When Jesus went to that pool and that man had been laying there and Jesus asked him, he said, you want to be healed? Duh. I mean, but you know, he needed to hear that. Jesus didn't give him a 12-page recitation on being healed. Jesus said, get up. Get up. Get up. Get your mat. Get out of here. That's, wow. Why do we make it so that it's like that? Why do we feel like that we've got to go, oh, Father, it's okay to do this. But why do we feel like that if we don't, we're not spiritual? Because I know what my spirit man says. And I know when I'm supposed to raise my hand. And there's times when I'm not supposed to raise my hand. But I listen to my spirit man. That Holy Spirit. You've heard Pastor Corey talk about tickling his hair. When God comes around, it runs down my neck and down my left arm. And man, here lately... It's just, it, it tingles, it, it the, just the, and I say, oh, thank you, Lord. It's almost like, I got you. I got you, son. It's good. You keep going. You keep going. Because, you know, we all fight. Str you think just because we're in the ministry that, oh, it's all good. It's all good. It's not necessarily all good at times. But I have learned from our pastor, who you've learned from, are you practicing what we teach and we preach here at Cowboy Church? How are you going through that? See, because you see us up here preaching or me up here preaching because I'm not going to talk about it. I'm talking about me. Is that when I go through something, you probably won't ever know it unless I tell you. But you know, as I'm walking it and I'm smiling and I'm saying, I'm speaking to it and God tingles down my neck and my arm, the Holy Spirit. It's like, oh. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, there's a lot of things that we can be ticked off about. This is totally not even my sermon. <laughs> but God, I'm doing what you want me to do. So I'm going with you. I don't know, but I can tell you right now that people get, it's hot. And people are so irritated and so ticked off. You know, you sweat in places you shouldn't sweat. My Lord. I mean, it's just not right. I mean, I don't mind sweating, but golly. You could be mad. And there are people that are mad. Oh, it's hot. Could be hotter. I mean, you know, because that's what hell's going to be like, so y'all better practice now if you're not going to heaven. I mean, did I say... <laughs> I say that out loud, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I mean, you know, think about it. If people are complaining about hell, go, do you know Jesus? Or how hot it is outside, do you know Jesus? No, you better. If you're complaining about the heat now, you better. See, what's the positive of everything? Why are you walking? I haunt y'all, listen, our well is not producing enough. We speak to it every day. I haul in 3,000 gallons of water a week for three families thank God that we have the means to do that yeah. amen I don't complain about hauling water yeah it takes me two or three hours to do it but you know what thank you Jesus we have a trailer we have a tank that we can do it with we got a pump that we can pump it into our storage tanks and as I do this I speak to that well mom and dad speak to the well our kids speak to that well and you know what? I get up there and check it, you know, while it's pumping in there, and all of a sudden that pump will kick on, and it'll pump a little out of the ground. But we're so close to that Lake Buchanan, it's, I heard it was dropping a foot every week now. But we speak to that water. See, how are you going through what you're going through? Amen? Are you relying on the strength of the Lord? Or are you trying to have the physical strength yourself? Like, uh, excuse me God I got this because I'm going to moan I'm going to complain I'm going to come whine I'm going to throw a temper tantrum maybe and I'm not picking on old timers because well I'm getting there but you know you, you, meet, you run into them old timers at the store or something ah sure is hot 
You ain't nothing but hot. You ain't, you ain't. Okay, well, shut up. <laughs> what good does it do? Right? It's like I told y'all when we started. God's going to reign on this place. He's going to reign on my place. He's reigning on church. He's reigning on my place. I don't know about yours because I don't know what you're speaking. But we got 10 acres that need water. We got a water well that needs to be filled up. And I know the man that can do it. Amen? Amen. That's right. That's my Jesus. My Jesus can do that. You see, but as we walk in love, then we can start operating in that supernatural. And we speak things, and we call them as though they're not as though they are. Because they're, they're supposed to be. Walk that love. Then we have the supernatural power. But while we're doing that, are you using the strength of the Lord? Oh, you got me back there. Thank you, God. <laughs> I was wondering how I was going to do this. Oh, Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear thou not. And I, I saw where there's fear thou not is in the Bible 365 times. Must be important. Amen. If it says fear thou not. For I am with thee. Be thou not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yes, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Who? Man, that ought to fire you up. Because when you're going through something, he's telling you right here, stop it. Calm down. Calm down. I'm right here. But you have to ask me, I need help, Lord. So, I, you don't have to turn there, but read the story if you get a chance about Elijah it's 1 Kings 19 1 through I put down 1 through 15 but Elijah got used to praying about miracles and they happened I mean he prayed it hadn't rained for three and a half years and he prayed to God and it rained he had a barbecue off with the ball people and they couldn't get theirs to cooking. And he asked God, and God let his fire, his barbecue fire, after he had watered it four times. He watered it three or four times just to prove to him that it really was God and it wasn't a trick. And God lit that fire. He, he, had, he helped feed, he prayed for a lady, with a lady, and he got food for her. He raised the dead. He laid on a, a child that had died. He laid on that child three times, and that child was raised from the dead. Elijah was used to miracles. But then Elijah, being like us folk, some things came against him. And he got down, and he got tired. Anybody ever, you can relate to that. I can't. I can't relate to this part because I've never been that far down. But he got so far down, he prayed because he knew the power of his prayer. He prayed for God that he was ready to die. Because in the past, it worked. In the past, when he prayed for rain, it rained. When he prayed for barbecue, it barbecued. Here he prays for rain, or prays for that he's ready to die. I'm ready to go. And what happens? God sends an angel. And he wakes him up and says, Arise and eat. You know, angels kind of like Jesus. They, they, few words. They don't mix words, do they? Arise, because he had prepared a cake. And there was something to water to drink. Elijah arose and ate. Went back to sleep. Angel shows up again. Arise and eat. You can't make 40 days if you don't eat and drink. So when that all started, Elijah was praying to die. But God, as we know, has the path for you. And Elijah was in tune with God, except he just physically gave out. So what does God do? He sends an angel, puts his arms around him, loves on him, feeds him, does it twice. And then he tells him where to go. New assignment. And Elijah doesn't argue with him anymore because Elijah's been built back up by the strength of the Lord. See, he knew the side of the supernatural, the praying for the, the rain and the fire. and the, But then here's where the strength of the Lord, the inner strength that God sends that angel, and they build him back up. They build him back up. Are you asking God for that kind of strength? Because that's something that we can relate to, you know, because people say, oh, that Bible was written over 2,000 years ago. That stuff doesn't apply now. Baloney. 
baloney. I guarantee you. But are we using it now to learn from and do it the right way instead of the way they did it? Right? Ooh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. That's in 2 Samuel 22. Psalms 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength. A, ooh, I love this. A very present help in trouble. See, all we have to do is say, God, strengthen me. Strengthen me. He's a very present help in time of trouble. It doesn't say that, well, he might help you later. Like Jason, we'll come to, we'll, God get to you later. That's not how God works. See, when we ask for that strength, it's a help in present. That means now. Now, you may not, it may not be the way that uh, I think it should be, but God's going to do it his way. But he knows the best way. Amen? Because you're going to get something out of that journey as you go through that. It's all about the journey. Are you journeying with God? Or are you trying to do it yourself? Amen? 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 3 says, But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. So that God is faithful, that means trusting. He honors, oh, listen to this. He honors what he says. He tells us stuff and he honors it. Like he is help in present. He is help in trouble. He honors that because that's what he said. Establish me. Now, that's an interesting word, that establish. Because you think of establish and, it, and establish means he will strengthen me. Right? I allow him to if, oh, are you allowing him to? If I ask God to strengthen me, but then I don't allow him to, what, it, what, what was that? I mean, because it gets back to that. And I, I don't know, I guess maybe that's why the Holy Spirit had me say it earlier, is it's not about you, it's about Him. But then when you ask for strength, He gives you strength, and you go, oh, I'd do it myself. I'll call the bank and get a loan for I'm in trouble. Or that's not what the doctor said. I got people that'll testify that to the otherwise. Are you, if you allow God to... He will change you. Phew. Keeps me from evil. God is my protector. He's my shield. He's my buckler. Remember we talked about that a few weeks ago, that that shield goes all the way around you. That's amazing that God has every side of you, top, bottom, feet, back, everything. Okay, I'm going to start closing. 1 Samuel 30. Y'all can turn there if you want. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Hallelujah. Chapter 30. You know, David here in chapter 30 is going through a tough time. They've been out and they've been fighting and they come back and We'll start in verse 1. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amicalites had invaded the south in Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And taken the women captives that were therein, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned. With fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. 
And David's two wives were taken captives. Anna Om, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. You listen to this, y'all. For the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abathar the priest, Amalek's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar brought thither the ephod to David. Man, I picked it. The Holy Spirit's probably having fun with me right now. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover. Okay, we're stopping right there. David just got back. His wives have been kidnapped. The whole, all the guys are wanting to kill him. Would you say he's having a bad day? <laughs> say, not going quite like he had planned the day. All right? So all of this comes against him. Did he try to solve the problem himself? No. What did it say right there? It says that David inquired at the Lord. It doesn't say David went and crawled up in the little ball and started crying. It doesn't say that David ran to his best friends and go, what do I do? Or he didn't run and say, hey, I give up if you'll just give our wives and sons. No. The first thing he did, he inquired of the Lord. God, I need help. What do I do? No matter what you're going through, no matter what gets thrown in our path, do we go, oh, wait a minute, I've got to ask my friend or I've got to ask my wife or husband, what do I do? Oh, wait, they're not with me. What do I, I go? God, I need your help right now. Amen. Not tomorrow, not next week, but I need something from you right now. And he's going to show you what you need. Because after you ask, you need to be quiet and listen because David did. It doesn't say that there, but how can God answer him if David didn't listen? Because David did what he said. David went on and took care of business. If y'all read the rest of the chapter, it's good. That's one of the cool... There's some cool stuff in here, y'all. It's fun. I love it. So when we learn that when it attacks us, Whatever is coming at us, the devil, the stinking devil who says that you're sick or that you're broke or that you're whoever, your neighbor's mad at you and going to shoot your dog. No, no, no. You say, God, I need you right now. And he will be there for you. Okay, last verse. Oh, did I say I was closing? Isaiah 40, verse 29. And this really is close. Isaiah 40. Not 41, Ricky. 40. We're going to start in verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, feigneth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. It's all right here. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that, ha that have no might, he increaseth strength. Everybody say strength. strength. Everybody say power. power. It's that inner strength. It's that inner power for our inner man to keep us going. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. See, I, I, looked, I looked up that, what that meant because it was bothering me. And what that refers to is, everywhere I could find, it refers to that we're all, it talks about if you do it yourself, that's being young. You know, because you've heard of, well, it didn't say this part, but I always heard about people saying, you know, when you're young, you're dumb. But when you're young, but so when we do it our way instead of allowing on God, that's what it's, that's what it's referring to. See, so the young will faint. When you do it yourself, you're going to faint. But, oh, well, there's a but there. But they that wait upon the Lord, that we learn trust on the Lord, shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with the wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Hallelujah. And I saw something this week. I learned something, and this is where we're stopping. I saw a guy, and he, it was just a motivational speaker, but he was talking about the eagle. And it fits so well with this. Did you know that, some of you may know, did you know that there's only one bird that'll attack an eagle? And that's a crow. And what the crow does is that it gets, it lands on the eagle behind its neck and it pecks at that eagle. Now, if something was pecking at me like that, I'm, I don't, if I'm a bird or, or whatever, I'm rolling in the ground, I'm being you know whatever the eagle doesn't do anything but one thing goes straight up and it keeps going higher and higher until that crow has trouble breathing and then the crow falls off the eagle doesn't struggle and fight with that stinking crow amen why don't we start acting like that why don't we start, when that crow or whatever it is starts pecking you in the back of the head, go, uh-uh, hey, whoa, 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 my father says he will strengthen me. He will walk and not faint. That's what the word says, and I throw it at you, you old black crow, you old stinking crow, you old noisy crow. See, because a crow really fits this kind of situation for us, what we go through, it's noisy, it's stinky, and it just annoying as all get out, Right? So why don't we start turning the tail on that stinking crow like an eagle, but we don't have to waste our strength. God gives us that strength. Amen? So why don't y'all get fired up this morning? Why don't you quit griping about it being hot? Why don't we quit being grumpy? Why don't we start saying, you know what? It's raining at my place. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? That lake's going to fill up again. Amen? Amen? Or whatever I'm going through, I'm not going through it anymore with a bad attitude. I'm going through it with my God. Because my God says he will strengthen me. He goes to make my way perfect. Don't you want your way perfect? Amen. I'm tired of living the way you see the world lives. And we don't have to. It's a choice. What do you choose today? Amen. Have y'all had a good time this morning? Man. Woo. Thank you, Lord. They only got part of the sermon I thought I was giving. So. But you gave what you got, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Do you know Jesus? We never do a service without giving someone the opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And it's never too soon. Like, right now is a good time, and we're going to give you that opportunity. Do you miss something here that you don't know what you're missing? Well, when you accept Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to reside in you. So if you're missing that, I encourage you right now, right now to give your life to the Lord. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, we're going to say a prayer out loud. And out of respect to your neighbors and everyone else, with your head bowed and your eye closed, we're going to say this prayer. We're going to say it out loud. And believers, y'all say it. You know how we do it here at church. Believers, say it with us. And those that are have never accepted Jesus, do it right now and say this prayer and mean it out of your heart. So believers, say it with us. Say, Father in heaven, I open the door of my heart. And I ask you to come in and save me. I believe Jesus died and he rose from the dead. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Father, I need your strength. And I thank you that you build me up. And today is my God day in Jesus' name. Now with every head bowed and every eye closed still, if you just said that prayer for the first time, you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we're not going to have you do anything funny. I just want you to raise your hand up on the count of three and then put it right back down. We want to get you a Bible. The Word says, don't be ashamed to acknowledge me in front of man and I'll acknowledge you before my Father. So on the count of three, if that was you that just accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, get your hand up on the count of three. One, two, three. Anyone? 
anyone. Be bold. All right, look at me. All right, y'all, that means we're all going to heaven. But, as Pastor Corey says, bring some folks to church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm glad y'all have had a good time, and I'm going to ask Miss Sharon to come up and close us out today. Amen. Amen. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Normally, oh, thanks. There I am. All right. So once again, thank you, Ricky, for, <laughs> for giving us a word that we all needed to hear. I, I make it a point to never preach after such an amazing message, but the Lord told me that I needed to say this for someone in here. This week, one of my sons had a wreck. Um, he was on his way to a job in his work truck with a trailer behind him and uh, someone passed another vehicle and was headed straight at him. He knew he was bigger and someone was going to die so he took to the ditch. Then he knew that without supernatural interference, <laughs> supernatural power, that he was going to start rolling. And so he said, I yelled the name Jesus over and over. And that trailer swung around, hit him in the side of the truck, and stopped the roll. The name of Jesus. And that goes right with what you talked about, sir. And um, I praise God for his safety. Uh, by the way, um, he's sore but he walked away. He needs a new truck, but he walked away. Ricky and his family are such a blessing to us, um, and we want to bless them. And the way we can do that is through our offerings. You know, we tithe to the church here and to Pastor Corey, but Ricky and the other pastors come up here because they love you and because they want you to hear the word of God. So let's bless them back. And we can do that by putting your offering right in here. Everything that goes in here right now is, goes to Ricky. Uh, make your checks out to Ricky Bowen Ministries um, and I'll gather it and give it straight to him. But without a doubt... Seed time harvest is important. And this is seed in good ground. Father, we just thank you for the blessing of this day. We thank you for the word that you have given us that we can take through the week as we strengthen because of you. Father God, I just love you so much. I thank you for Corey and Jamie's safe trip home as pastors of this church and as your children. Father God, I just thank you for the love that you show us each day. That when we know that we're weak, you wrap your arms around us and say, I got you, my child. Thank you, Father God. And I praise you and thank you. I thank you for the rain that is falling on our land. In Jesus' name, amen.